The power crisis continues to unfold globally, and I've got some information for you. The first thing I want to look at is the US grid going down. Actually, a possibility? Well, some say that it is. In fact, very connected people are saying that. The second thing is the coal comeback. During this energy crisis, you have seen the resurgence of coal. The price is up. The demand is up. I've got information around that. The third thing is a deeper look at some issues that I haven't been able to cover and some other factors that are truly very important that you need to know. I've got a jam-packed one. Let's go. Take a look at this article out of Bloomberg. Global energy crisis threatens to hit U.S. grids this winter. Global coal shortages may leave utilities without enough fuel. U.S. power companies are using 23% more coal in a switch from gas. So you saw what was happening with China. They told Australia, no, 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 we don't want your coal anymore. We're not you know, doing business anymore. This is going to be the way it is back and forth, back and forth. Now the demand is up. They've got many issues on top of that. They are dealing with their own problems and they need that coal. But they don't want to go back to Australia with their tail between their legs. So they're trying to use alternative sources. You've seen the blackouts everywhere. There's so many different things. The energy crisis that's led to electricity shortages and blackouts in Europe and Asia may be heading for the U.S. Remember, nobody is impervious to this. No area. You as an individual, on the other hand, you need to be ready. You need to be prepared and you need to take those steps. We'll talk about that more in a moment. Electric companies are alerting customers about winter price hikes and an energy hedge fund warned of potential gas shortages. The utility executives have told them that they're anxious that fuel shortages this winter could trigger blackouts. This is huge. Okay, look at what happened with the droughts, with the fires, with the, you know, all kinds, all kinds of different factors that have led to this moment right now. And any of those one things could disrupt your life. These utilities are worried that assets that they have can't get enough fuel. There are people of high authority at large utilities that are deeply concerned. This could affect almost every region of the U.S., according to this particular individual. The global economic recovery has driven up demand for power, triggering shortages and high prices for natural gas, especially in Asia. That's prompted utilities to use more coal. Remember, I was talking about this in yesterday's video, telling you that this was the case. And of course, this is being talked about everywhere at this point. We know what's going on. They were going away from coal. Now they are seeing that they have to use it at this point. So it's kind of derailing their plan to go against coal. Because you remember what they had said previously. They said, you can have a coal business, but we're going to bankrupt it. And now today, the demand is skyrocketing. And of course, because there are less mines, for obvious reasons we'll talk about in a second here, but at the same time, there's more demand. And what happens when you have less supply but more demand? The price goes up, okay? Um, that prompted utilities to use more coal, which as a result is now in short supply around the world. U.S. utilities are switching away from gas and expected to burn 23% more coal this year. Now, there was a point that I wanted to get into. If we get a prolonged, prolonged coal this winter, there will be problems. So let's keep an eye on that. I've heard some areas are expected to receive some seriously low temperatures this year. But the weatherman is even less accurate than the economist, so I wouldn't put too much weight on that. But here they just basically talk about how they are expecting the uh, prices that people pay to increase. So keep that in mind. It's so important because many people think it, you know, oh, it's, it's probably in this range here. It goes up 2% a year and so on. But this could absolutely be a problem for so many. 
This is the economy now. One hour errands are now multi hour odysseys. Next day deliveries are becoming day after next deliveries. That car part you need, it'll take an extra week. The book you're looking for, come back in November. The baby crib you bought, make it December. Hi, eyeing a new home improvement job that requires several construction workers. Haha, ha, pray for 2022. And it's talking about how the, you know, some comparisons to the 1970s and so on. This just shows you, as they call it the everything shortage, that so many people on a global scale are being affected by this. And I believe that this is really understated, despite the fact that, you know, I've been talking about it every day, you're seeing it in the news. I think people still haven't realized the potential for what could come. World food prices hit a 10 year peak, according to the FAO. You've got this, just 180 more days until your oven arrives. Appliance delays cause havoc. Then you've got toys. Toys may be harder to get in time for the holidays due to the global supply chain delays. And unfortunately, diaper shortage hits. Now that one is a serious one, of course. Maybe you don't need that new iPhone, but the diapers might be more important. Look, all I'm trying to say here is that this is affecting so many different people in different ways, and it's coming for different reasons. Underlying all of this is the fact that there's a mass distortion in the financial system because of central banking. Central banking has ruined everything, and there's a chain of events, okay? Does it mean that there's a diaper shortage because the Federal Reserve's balance sheet is at eight trillion? No, but having super low interest rates creates these distortions. How do you create super low interest rates? You've got to use open market operations and that is printing money. We also know that their balance sheet is at least eight trillion dollars for what they're willing to tell us. And the, you know, the story goes on and on. Let's talk about this a little bit in the Money GPS Insights. Globally compounding problems have resulted in higher prices that people have to pay and ultimately that's the most important factor. Energy has been a big concern right now and that is turning to the US for the colder months of this year. My message to you is to have some sort of backup in place before the winter. We've got very little time. That's food, supplies, anything that you need, energy of some sort. Try to make it happen. People have wood burning stoves. They've got whatever it takes. Okay, make that happen. Don't delay. A few minutes ago, we were talking about coal, and this is an extension of that. U.S. coal mines are running out of miners just as demand booms. Global coal demand is surging, but output, output from the U.S. mines isn't. Miners who have left the industry aren't coming back. That's a simple matter of fact. Now, what do you got to do? You got to pay them a lot more money. I believe I read somewhere of 100 thousand dollars but still at this time they don't know how long the boom is going to last they would have to continue for a long period to kind of pull enough people to get that actually out of the ground by the time it makes it actually being used you know this could be a long time so this is just showing you 2016 up until present while the numbers have increased since the bottom of 2020 there it just shows you that you know, th these things don't change real fast, okay? So there's some detail in here now. Over time, a miner can now make close to $100,000 $100, a year, but this is just something that many haven't found their way into right now at this time. Oil rallies after U.S. signals no plans to tap crude reserves. And so what happened? So initially, they said, okay, there's everything's going to be good. Don't worry about it. Price goes down. Then they say, we're not going to tap our reserves. Price goes up. There's always this ebb and flow. There's always, you know, the news articles moving it in a direction, a dollar here, two dollars there. But the trend is clearly in that all commodities are rising. Let me know. What do you think? Is this underlying all of it? Is the Federal Reserve's actions really the reason why we're seeing all the chaos in the world? Is it a bunch of different factors here? Or is it simply, this is a supply chain bottleneck problem, end of story, that's it. 
let me let's discuss that in the, in the comments below make sure you put that i want to hear from you I, I reply to as many people as i possibly can and of course i want to hear from you Kellogg plans to use salaried staff to reopen plants amid strike. Company has struggled to meet their demand. Kellogg plans to use the salaried employees to run the facilities. We'll see what happens here. But this is just one big company that has been dealing with some issues. What about used cars? I just told you in the last video, the one before, that I would give you the used car index and take a look it's at a record high again. Used cars are surging right now. Inventories for vehicles are just dropping like a fly. Now, look at this. Container shipping rates. Now, you would think, if you can see on this, they've all started to come down. All right. Coming down. That's fantastic, right? Prices are falling. That is a good thing. Except there's just one issue and before that don't forget to hit that thumbs up button to support the channel uh right down there don't forget that it's so key okay the reason why the reason why is simply because the actual power outages the problems that they're facing at the factories are actually impacting the ability to get this stuff out of the country so the prices are coming down as a result. This is not a good sign. It just means that there's probably going to be another resurgence up. The only way to get the price of all of these things down is if there is some sort of recession, depression, whatever it might be. That's the only way right now at this time. And the number one thing that can be done to start is to increase interest rates. The world is questioning Washington's competence, fearing prospect of U.S. default. That's right. This right now is a problem. But of course, let me let me just show you what, what happened here. What would happen if the most economically powerful country were to default on its debts? The damage would be catastrophic, according to Janet Yellen. On CNBC, she said, I fully expect it would cause a recession as well. Catastrophic recession. You better, better, better deal with this situation. How do you do that? Or deficits pump up the debt. Now, this is important because underlying all of this, you are seeing this never ending desire to create more of the same. Of course, the US is going to pump more money in. Of course, they're going to devalue the currency more and more. But they use this show back and forth to pretend that it isn't contrived, manipulated, and really just following a script. Anyway, you probably saw this already. I think I did mention it maybe on the live or one of my previous videos, but the pipeline uh, over on the west coast of the United States, small crack in pipeline may have delayed oil spill detection. Some interesting stuff there. If you want to read that, articles, as always, will be in the description under the sources. And this one here, U.S. nuclear-powered submarine struck an object underwater in the South China Sea. Now, they say everything's all good, submarine's fine, but based on that location, at this time especially, because you know what's happening with Taiwan and the whole story, this is very unusual. Now, if they were actually fooling around, it wouldn't come out in the news right away. So I don't know what's going on, but I wanted to bring that to you because there's these massive developments. I did a live video about this uh, this past weekend, and perhaps we can talk more about it in you know uh, in this maybe tonight or, or or what have you whenever you're watching this video this weekend. And this is important. I think it's a huge issue. I think it's evolving. That's all. I'm going to end it there. If you are not an insider, you've got to be because that's my way to get to you directly. People email me. I email you 
five days a week, I'll send you the video of the day directly to your mailbox right here at this card or the moneygps.com. And like I said, if you want to support the channel, simply give a thumbs up. I really do appreciate that. If you haven't seen this video yet, you definitely want to check it out. Click it and I'll see you there.